There we go. Welcome, 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 welcome. My name is G and you are watching all astrology. We are going to talk about the new moon. No, February's new moon. February 2023 has a new moon coming up. And uh, we're going to talk about the meaning of the sign that it's in. And then for those of you who have watched videos before, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go over the meaning of what a new moon is. We'll see it literally on the chart. And then we will probably spend a little bit of time looking at some of the other players uh, at this new moon. So we'll look maybe for what's squaring and what's trining. And then when we take all those things, all those bits together and put them in the big picture, right? Just think of, think of astrology and all the little bits I talk about and that I kind of take apart and, and analyze. Think of them all as the ingredients in a recipe that you're making on the stovetop. Yeah. So like you've got the pot on the stove, but we want to know what are the ingredients in this pot, right? So you're like, hey, I'm making such and such. Well, what goes in that to make such and such? How many times do you not know? Like you would never know that that maybe, um, I can't say garlic or ginger, but you would never know a certain ingredient was in there. You know, something like anchovy paste, right? Somebody's eating something and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And you're just like, yeah, you can barely tell there's anchovies in here, right? And so somebody might be like, you know, so the thing is, it if, if the anchovies are by themselves, they're not as palatable. We don't really care for them as much, right? Some people do, some don't. Same with sardines, right? But when you know how to mix and put them together with other ingredients, you can get and achieve a certain recipe. So that's kind of how I look at the astrology and, and the and the weaving of the meanings. It's saying, but this is the recipe. This is what's present. This is what's here. We, we can only work with what we got, right? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it apart and see what are the ingredients that make up this new moon, new beginning. All right. So here we go. We've got this new moon and um, just follow my cursor. Okay. You see that there? I've just drawn in my number eight and I'm waiting for StreamYard to be with us again because it's trying to convince me that I don't that I have faulty internet and it has nothing to do with my internet. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Thank you, StreamYard. I don't know if they listen or not, but anyway, so here we go. We're going to follow this um, arrow, this cursor, and new moon is in Pisces. And that means that the sun and the moon are together because that is what makes a new moon. Okay. The sun and the moon are together. And when I say something is together, that means their degrees and minutes match. You see that? The sun is the circle with the dot in the middle. The moon, well, it looks like the moon. Um, one degree and 22 minutes is how you read this. I know it's awkward because we're not reading from left to right. Okay, you're right. That is a little strange. Um, but as the planets go around the chart, they then change. We're, 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 we're still reading the degrees first and then the minutes. You see that? So like this is Black Moon Lilith. She's at 15 degrees and 45 minutes. Yeah. And down here, this is Cirrus. We read that as five degrees and 59 minutes in the sign of Libra. Yeah. Okay. And here's the South Node. Six degrees and 13 minutes in the sign of Scorpio. Yeah. So this is why it's important to know what each symbol represents these glyphs symbols same thing they ha each have meanings and this is why this is such a beautiful beautiful science because you know you you have to have a bit of knowledge you have to put in the time and the studying to know what these things mean okay this is um it can be really complex and difficult which is why we spend time doing this together so let's go back up now to the sun and the moon at one degrees and 22 minutes in the sign of Pisces. Yes. So here we go. Another new moon, right? And this new moon is showing us that we are going to have a new beginning. And we want to know what we're having a new beginning in. We know the answer to that when we know what the sign of, of Pisces means. So we got to go through like all the keywords of Pisces energy. And that is a, that's like a whole lot of stuff, you know, a whole lot. Pisces energy, you often hear me talk about Pisces like, well, it's, it's the divine. It's Jesus in the garden because what did Jesus do in the garden? Jesus was praying to the father 
And that's the sign of Pisces. So it's known to be a very spiritual sign, meditation and prayer, right? Sign of Pisces. On the same line of energy, on the same line, yes, you see, I'm looking for my pen. On the same line of energy, just pretend that this is Piscean energy, right? So if this is Piscean energy, it has many degrees to it, okay? And matter of fact, in this chart, as in all the charts, all the signs have 30 degrees to it. And so each degree has a different meaning, okay? So that one degree is like the infant stage. It's very young. It's very young, right? And because it's at a young stage, sometimes think about this when you're a child. Um, some of us, when we were like, hey, it's time to go to church and it's time to pray, what did we do? Right. We would maybe be in church and like playing games, trying to pretend we weren't being there, maybe not paying attention, maybe singing, right? Maybe making up stories like we have to go to the bathroom, right? Then there's some some of us when we were little. I don't know who, but some of us, you know, I hear stories all the time of, of little ones who, who, boy, when, when, when that one goes to church or when that one goes to, you know, whatever your religion is, okay, w whatever that is, this is all encompassing whenever you go to pray, right? So th they really pray, like they really are into it. They're really, they're, you sit there, they got their little hands together and they're praying, right? So everyone is different because we all know that some folks are born older and there's a lot of truth in that. There's a lot of truth in that. And astrology does talk about that, but that's, that's soul astrology. And that's for, you know, the other video, if you didn't see it, go watch it. Um, the 30 degrees area one kind of explains that. So because Piscean energy has 30 degrees to it, it also can have like 30 different meanings to it. And this isn't just Pisces. This is for all the signs. Okay. So I guess this is just a way of trying to figure out how to simplify things for people where they're like, wait a minute, you said Pisces was prayer and meditation. How can it be illusions and delusions and fantasy? Right. How could it then turn into like make believe and sci fi and, and, and creating music and poetry and words? You see how it grows up. It, it goes from telling stories to using that energy in a very creative way. It can be a theater. It can be going on the stage and screen. It can be writing manuscripts and stories. Right. It could be creative writing. It can be the playwright. It can be the director, someone behind the scenes or someone in a costume with makeup. It can be all of that. Right. And so you often hear me say, oh, politicians are have a lot of strong Piscean energy in their charts too, right? Because you're someone who's typically performing in some way. So even if you're a politician who is sincere and who's really trying to work for the people, there's still a certain way that you speak and certain things you're very cautious about saying when you're on camera. And that's kind of like an actor or an actress, right? They have a script in their mind that of what they're going to talk about, right? So it, it can be about being deceiving, but it is also absolutely about uh, a certain, uh, I'm hearing um, there has to, it, it. yeah, I keep hearing performance, but there was another word. It's about getting the point across. It's about belief. It's about, it's about understanding, belief and understandings. And sometimes uh, these energies have to be stretched and we have to see the, the aspects or the degrees that we would consider negative. Okay. That we may consider negative or that can, can express in a negative way because each human being has free will. Yeah. Each human has free will, which is like, if you take a set of twins who were born at the same time of day, literally minutes apart, they popped out. And it's like, okay, they're going to be so much alike. Like you look at their birth chart and it's, there's differences, believe it or not, there's differences and they can be like night and day. And the question is why, how can that be? Right? Well, we have to take into consideration free will. What about their soul? What about their soul's energy, right? What about that soul's energy? Free will is a big factor and the history and the past um, and so that all comes into play, right? We can't even talk about genetics because they're born from the same parents, but 30 degrees, different degrees, different ways energies can express. So for Pisces, all of that was to say behind the scenes, it doesn't, it doesn't appear to be exactly as it seems to appear to be. It almost looks like there's a show being put on Pisces energy, 
the big screen, Hollywood, theater. Today, I was just watching a video, uh, Captain Corey. Forgive me, my brain has been absolute mush. I can't remember the name of his channel, and so forgive me, but Bo of the Fifth Column sent me over there, sent uh, a lot of us over to his channel, and uh, he gets visits. He had conversations with Johnny Depp, right, because Captain Corey has a, a special life situation going on. He's a youngster. I can't remember how old Captain Corey is, like maybe maybe nine or ten. I'm not even sure. Um, but anyway, John, uh, Captain Captain Jack was explaining to Captain Corey that he has different that he has he's Captain Jack and he's Captain he's Captain Jack and he's Johnny. He said, but in all honesty, this is this was this came right out of Captain Jack's mouth. Uh, he said, in all honesty, I have a much easier time being Captain Jack because Captain Jack is funny. Captain Jack knows how to make people laugh. And Captain Jack can give you some giggles and make you feel better. And it was really touching. It was so touching. You know, he was very sincere. It was so touching. Um, so, yeah, I'll link his channel below. Uh, again, if you want to uh, show that little guy some love the way that Johnny Depp has, yeah, go and show his channel some love. Um, I'll link it below. But this is all Pisces energy. This is why I'm bringing this up. So this little boy, he's pretending to be a pirate himself, right? He's been inspired when he's been going through very physically challenging and mentally and emotionally challenging times. He would watch, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean series. And so he, he's he's Captain Corey, right? And so he's got his own little, I forget what the hat is called that they wear. Anyway, I learned it and forgot it already because I'm crazy right now. But but it's a, it's a show and it's make-believe and it's pretending, right? And so the pretending like, like Johnny is doing being Captain Jack for Captain Corey, it's to do something good. It's to do something positive. And yeah, Captain Corey spent a lot of time in the hospital. And this is also Pisces energy. Yeah, because it's where our physical body is no longer being seen. And so when we're in a hospital, we may feel like we're trapped or that we are being locked up or we're, we're just, we're, we're restricted in some way because we're not able to go out and about and to do the things we normally do. Right. And so when people see us, well, we see doctors, we see nurses, people come. Right. And so we're dressed in a different way when people see us when we're in the hospital, we don't really look the same. We look different. We may not look so great physically and we may, we may have tubes, we may have equipment and stuff. And so there's props, there's props and stuff around us many times. And so this, a lot of this is Piscean energy. And what else happens when somebody's in the hospital, right? There's prayer, there's prayer. Many times that's when people find God, right? When they go through those tough times, all of a sudden it's, oh my gosh. And people start praying. And the same Pisces energy, other than being the divine and prayer and talking to the creator, it can also be prison because we're locked up right? So again, this is different variations of how this energy can be used. Okay. So lots of different meanings, but it's understanding because it's the 12th sign in the Zodiac and it, all the understanding, all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the keywords of the previous 11 signs, right? When we look at the, when we look at the chart, when we go through Aries, hold on, I didn't realize that William was up. Hold on. When we go through Aries and, and we just go through the entire chart, all those signs, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, like all those signs, right? Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, all that information is, with, is held within the Piscean energy because it's number 12. You get it? It's the 12th. It's the last one. It's the final stage. It's the final stage. So the, yes, with Pisces energy, there's typically going to be some sort of an, a closure and an ending, some sort of a completion, right? Uh, because it's Pisces energy, some sort of a completion. Okay. Uh, let me get my little, my head off of this. Think about the Piscean keywords, you know, politics, politicians, performers, performances. Remember, this is also musicians, anybody that's doing a performance of any sort. Okay. Another thing for Pisces is um, it's, you know, it's that 5D realm. So we think of sound. It's not something physical that you can hold in your hand. I can't hold a musical note, right? But I can hear it. So it's sensitivities. It's sensitivities. And Pisces energy is extremely sensitive. 
extremely sensitive. All right. So yes, when you're speaking to the, to the one, when you're speaking to Allah, to the creator, to God, to Yahweh, when you're speaking to the one, uh, that the one is hearing you, right? It's that energy. Okay. And so Pisces is also known to be sacrificial energy. The one who sacrifices, the one who not only serves, but sacrifices for the group, right? Because it's the last sign of the Zodiac. It understands everything all the other signs are going through. It has that wisdom and it has that knowledge, but it has the empathy because it can sometimes feel what others are going through. So it, it feels more than it wants to. It's highly sensitive. And think of the feet, think of the feet, Pisces energy, the fish, the fish in the water, um, I mentioned feet because, well, physically it is your feet. Okay. Because that's the, you can, you can, there are physical attributes. Parts of your body are associated with each sign. And so I, I, the nerves of the bodies would be Aquarius and the ankles. And then Pisces is the feet and sensitivities to the feet. And boy, do I know about all of this right now, right? Because, uh, yeah, I, this all turned, my sensitivities started getting rocked through the boat and <laughs> right off the boat and into the water and uh, on a really high level for a few years now as as Uranus is traveling through my 12th house Pisces Uranus traveling through my 12th house feet yes you got it so a new beginning at one degrees in 22 minutes find out in your chart do you have your chart if not why don't you if you want your chart just comment to me below and i will get your chart to you we will do what we can for you to help you out to help you to get that we're going to go and look at mercury because mercury has to do with the conversations that we're having it's the conversations it's what we're talking about it's what's in the news it's how we are thinking, how our brain is working, the way that our brain is working. And if it's in Aquarius, which it is here, it's at 12 degrees and 48 minutes in the sign of Aquarius. And that is Mercury right there. The little purple figure, stick figure with like the little antennas on top of the head, that's Mercury. So it's in Aquarius. This is group energy. This could have to do with the airlines. This is uh, social platforms, right? It's, it's digital. It's electric electricity, it's alternative energy. This is the sign of Aquarius. It's science. It's, yeah, it's physics. It's astronomy. It's astrology. It's, yeah, that's Aquarius. Okay. So vehicles. Now, why did I say vehicles? Because first of all, I heard it. <laughs> as soon as I pointed at Mercury again, I heard vehicles come through very loudly. Well, does that make sense? Yes. Mercury does represent vehicles because Mercury is the ruler of the sign of Gemini and Gemini's over here in Mars. I'm sorry. Did I say that? I did. Gemini is over here with Mars in Gemini at 1550, 15 degrees and 50 minutes. And this Mercury and this Mars are almost at the same degrees. We should expect to hear some sort of news and some sort of information. This will be beneficial because this is a trine energy. Now, does that mean that what we hear is beneficial? Well, it looks like it would be good news because this could be electric. This can be batteries and technology. This can be cars, but this can be alternative fuel sources. Um, this, can, this is science and this is the creative energy. This is you know, the scientists, this is the creator, literally man is the creator. This is uh, the Wright brothers. This is, you know, like Leonardo da Vinci. This is Benjamin Franklin. This is Nikola Tesla. Give me some other mad uh, scientists, some mad creators, some mad inventors who I don't know the names of and that I'm not thinking of. Put them in the comments. Who else created things, but big things, created things, you know, like the fact that we have, you know, AC, right? Whole house air conditioning, right? Is, is amazing. Refrigerators, right? When it went from the icebox to the refrigerators, this is all Aquarius energy. Inventions. This is Aquarius energy. It is also disruptive inventions because Aquarius is truly disruptive. All right. So when I see Mercury trining Mars, and this is the neighborhood because it's Gemini, it's news, it's Gemini, but it's transportation, local transportation. That is Gemini and Mercury rules Gemini. So that's why I say cars. So this can be cabs. So it could be like Uber news, right? It can be, um, you know, electric vehicle news, 
but maybe some other news like alternative, maybe we'll hear more about hydrogen, who knows, right? There's a lot of different things I've been watching videos or seeing clips of. Uh, let me know in the comments, what are some awesome things that are being invented and created where it's going to be like changing the future, right? Like we're in that midst of it. So that's beneficial because that's a trine. So let me draw that line for you guys. There's my blue line. Didn't want to stay. So I will kind of go like that. So that's right there. All right. That's a trine and that's sweet. We'll look to see if there's anything at 15, like 12, 13, 14, 15 in Libra. And there is not. However, I want to point out that for this sample chart that I'm that I have here, this is just a sample chart. Let's pretend this was your chart or somebody that you knew they would have a grand air trine because their third house cusp line begins at 1413. You see that? Well, 1413 would actually trine this then. So in your chart at home, you may have something at that degree. All right. Let me get rid of that for you. Let me draw it the right way. Um, everything is very awkward tonight. I'm using some different stuff and everything is just, ah, uh, anyhow. So there's your grand air trine. All right. So you've got a grand air trine with news and information. This is also, Gemini is also sibling energy. Okay. Uh, Aquarius is friends and group energy. Social causes is Aquarius energy. Remember Gemini. This is siblings, neighbors, coworkers, schoolmates, school teachers. Right. So it's like your primary, primary school and teachers in the classroom and they're, yep. But your co your coworkers for you who work with this. So this is also business. Uh, this is like trade, business and trade and networking, big time, digital, social media, big time is Gemini, social media. And so um, for this new moon, does anything trine the new moon? That's the other trine I want to look at we, that I didn't really look at, but we're looking at it now. So a trine to this new moon would be something in either of the water signs, which is cancer energy and Scorpio energy, okay? Because Scorpio is the other water sign, right? There's cancer and Scorpio and Pisces. So if you have anything at one degrees, which in this chart we have something at zero, look at that, we have... Humea, the Hawaiian goddess at zero degrees. So that this new moon is trining that. And that's in Scorpio. So if it's in Scorpio, that tells us a lot as far as our shared values. But you're looking for the degrees. And then the next thing you look for is what house is it in? So by example, on this chart, if you had something at, you know, zero or one or two degrees in Scorpio, the new moon would trine you. And then you would say, well, gee, I've got mine and it's in such and such house number. So let's pretend you tell me, hey, mine's in house number three. I'm going to say, wow, then it sounds like something beneficial is coming. And if it's your third house, it's by way of communication, networking, talking, right? Writing calendars out, making plans, being busy, talking to people, uh, maybe sales and marketing, because that's also the third house energy, neighbors siblings, coworkers. This is all that third house. This is also your automobile in, in like in the neighborhood. Like if you were to go on a short trip, I would be like, wow, you have trying energy for your short trip. That's good news. You know, that would be a good, a good time to travel when, when you have trying energy, if it's, if you're looking to take a short trip, as opposed to me saying, oh my gosh, I think I see a couple of squares in here, which means you might have some delays. There might be traffic jams. There might be a flat tire. You know, there could be delays. There could be the rent -a car wasn't available, right? That would be square energy. Trying energy adds ease. So if it adds ease to that third house, it also adds ease to the way you think and talk and relate and communicate. So it adds ease to all communications for you, especially on social media or if you're learning something, because that's the third house. All of that. It's a lot, I know. So that's the trine for the new moon. Now, I want to take a look at Mars one more time. Mars is over here. We're going to change color real quick. Because I don't see, we don't have anything in Cancer at zero degrees. So we're just going to skip that, right? There's nothing in the chart. So we're going to change color. We're going to go to Mars. 
just because we always start off with Mars because Mars tends to be where we kind of have difficulties. And so now Mars energy in Gemini, because it's in Mars, it squares, it squares Pisces energy, right? Gemini and Pisces square each other. They're both mutable signs. And Mars being at 15 is still squaring Nessa here, okay? Now, this has been squaring it for some time. It's not just on this new moon. See how it's at 15? Yeah. So it's been squaring it because that Nessa is a slow mover. Uh, that Nessa energy's kind of got like a little bit of that revenge energy to it. So for you at home, you want to see what house that Nessa is in. Here it's at 15, 28 in Pisces, and it's been there. So this isn't new. This isn't new. But you may have something in your natal chart around that 15 degrees. And I'll give you as an example, my, sh my chart is not up, but I do know for certain that that Mars, when it's at this degree, uh, 1550, almost at 16, it does square something in my chart. I have something in Pisces at 17 degrees. So that Mars is already squaring it at the time of this new moon. Yeah. Which at the time I'm doing this recording, this Mars is like at 10 degrees. So it's not squaring my moon yet. Right. So I will be paying attention to that. Absolutely. I will be paying attention to the communications from Mars. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, what's going on up here in the house number that that's in for me. Okay. Where's the other lo location Mars can be squaring somebody? Well, that would be Virgo energy. Okay. Cause Mars squares Virgo and it would have to be around, you know, 12, 13, 14, uh, by this date, it's 15, 16, 17 degrees of Virgo. Right, because then that would create that uncomfortable T-square only if you have something in Pisces at like, you know, 15, 16, 17 on the date of this new moon, right? And if you do, then yeah, it's uncomfortable, okay? It's uncomfortable, but it won't last forever. The good news is this Mars is going to keep moving, but it does take Mars, it takes Mars a full week to move two degrees, Okay, so that means that if you're feeling stress and tension right now from this 1550 Mars in a week's time, it'll have moved two degrees. And chances are that movement by two degrees will bring ease in your life. And so that's a really wonderful thing, knowing that that brings some ease, right? And, and eases off on the stress and tension. Pluto is over here. Right there. You see that? That's Pluto. It's got like, um, it looks like a person with their arms in the air, like a surrender energy. And that's good advice when you're dealing with Pluto. Okay. It's not so much surrender as in I give up. What it's saying is Pluto comes along and it brings changes. And so when those changes come, you're not supposed to fight them. You're supposed to recognize and be like, oh, damn, this is that change. This is that Plutonian thing. This is that force that I'm not going to be able to fight against. Think about it, right? When you're in the ocean, uh, if you try to swim against that current, you're going to wear yourself out and drown. You're better off trying to tread water and, and see where the hell that thing carries you. And hopefully it gets you to land, but you'll wear yourself out trying to fight against it unless you're like some unbelievably skilled swimmer, right? So it's kind of got like that energy, you know, it's like soul's power. It's it's the invisible. It's the unseen. It's amazing is what it is. I've seen people who were so, so, so sick. And when Pluto got activated in their chart, all of a sudden they were, they had this unbelievable amount of energy. It was like, holy crap, what just happened? Like someone flipped a freaking switch and that's Pluto. It's just amazing. And then at the same time, it can also make things, uh, make the unseen seen. And when that unseen is seen. It comes bubbling up. You know, it's kind of got a, like a volcanic energy Pluto because it's something that was hidden down below and it comes bursting up. That's Plutonian energy. And Pluto is there to just assure you that with these changes, you're to just put, just, just kind of put the hands up and be like, okay, I, I trust that this is the direction we're supposed to be going in. I trust that this is that this is over or that I see this is absolutely changing and I'm not going to fight it because you can't beat Pluto. It's it's there to make a change and it's changing in a way where it will forever be transformed. So at 29 degrees Pluto is about because it's in Capricorn and that's government and business. So it's people who are who work for in the government and the business and think about the structures within your society. Give me some examples. Think about that, right? We've been hearing a lot of crazy things on the news. Um, 
yeah, a lot of different avenues. And it's really not funny. I uh, don't even know. I, ch I guess I chuckled because I'm always every day. I'm just like, oh, my God. When will this end? Like, there's always this new thing, this new abuse of power, Pluto. People who are abusing their authority and their power, right? Whether you're given a badge or a gun or you arrive on a scene and it's your job to do this or to do that, your job is to serve and protect. And again, I'm not trying to pinpoint the police because I know there's good cops out there, right? We've just been hearing about the ones who've been abusing their power, but they're not the only ones, right? It's anybody who's had power. So people who are in business and who have tons of money, maybe you're not in business, but you're in some sort of business, right? Maybe you just have generational wealth in your family and you've just got a ass load of power because the amount of money you have, people who abuse that money and who abuse, I should say, the power that the money gave them, right? Because our society is set up that way, that if you have money, you have power. So it's for those who abuse their positions, who abuse the power the gift, the honor that they were given. It was, it was understood with Pluto. It's understood that if you are given this power, you will fiercely protect the power itself so that it's not used for bad, but used for good. And when you're, when you're using it for bad or not using it in a positive, helpful way, Pluto comes reckoning. Pluto's the bell. Pluto tolls that bell. And the day is here and it says your time is now. Okay. And so we're, we're seeing that kind of play out in front of us. Yeah. We're seeing that play out in front of us in a lot of different ways. Uh, some of the uh, other energy, some of the other planets, Venus. Okay. So we're going to go to a different color. We're going to take a look at Venus. We're going to go to green for Venus and look where she's at in Pisces at 29 degrees. So Venus represents your values, my values. So this can be money, right? This can be banking. And that's all very typical, but it can be the earth and it can be food. It's your creature comforts, the five senses. Think of Venus and energy and think of what and who you value. Venus is in Pisces at a critical degree. She's about to pop and hit 30, 30 degrees of Pisces. She's about to go to zero degrees of Aries. And the point of that is that this is critical because typically this is like a graduation degree. It says, okay, you're happening in the highest and the best and the most altruistic way possible. Pisces, it could be hospitals, it can be prisons, it can be doctors, it can be people who help those people, people who work in those environments. It's politicians, it's people who are given the ability to put on a show or a performance, people who can pray, who can meditate. So it's people who are spiritual and it's Venus. So women, Feminine energy, Venus. Venus is feminine. V Pisces is also feminine energy. Pisces is also feminine energy. And so that at 29 degrees, Venus is a pretty quick mover. Um, at 29 degrees, she's going to be trining anything at 29 in Scorpio and trining anything that you have in your chart at 29 degrees in the sign of Cancer. And I'm, this chart doesn't have anything at 29 the ascendant is at 2156. So Venus was trining it like a week before. But yeah, that would set up a beautiful trine energy. So if you have something at those degrees, then you're you're then you're like, yeah, baby, this is wonderful. Because Venus can bring gifts. Venus is usually beneficial. Venus is about harmony. And in Pisces, it's really like a surrender. It's really like a I want to meditate. I want to pray. Uh, some may have the strong earnings, even, you know, stronger for watching movies and to just chill out or to listen to music, right? That's, that's Pisces energy for a performance for somebody else to be the performer so that you can kind of just watch Venus. It's even possibility that you may find for yourself, you may, your new desire, maybe you find yourself being a little bit more theatrical or even dramatic because it's Venus and it's in Pisces. So at this critical degree in Pisces, we could expect like hospitals and Anything with Pisces, prayer, meditation, surrender, uh, understanding is a big word in harmony, peace and harmony and understanding, uh, even forgiveness, Venus and Pisces, even for forgiveness, because you see her at 29. Yeah. So like a couple of days before, where was Venus? She was conjunct Neptune. Right. So you just you just got to be careful when it comes to spending money with Venus and Pisces. But um, yeah, forgiveness and understanding and uh, peace are, are, are uh, like keywords, big keywords with that energy at that time. Um, another thing is the nodes. We'll take a quick look for the nodes. 
uh, six degrees north node right there at six degrees. I'll go to hot pink. We'll see if that works. All right. So here's our north node at six degrees now. South node down there. Right? The north and the south node, they're connected. See that? They have the same degrees, north and the south node, six degrees. So for people who have energy, planets, nodes in Aquarius energy, right? At six, five, and four degrees. This is going to bring bring some stress and tension because you're you're in the middle of a of a nodal square. So that would be Aquarius and Leo energy. You see that the square is in, in pink. Yeah, it's less it's less intense that way. And we'll move this to like five degrees if I can get it there. We don't really have anything on this chart at that degree, just so you know by transit. So this would only be in your personal chart. Okay. And the best way to figure these things out is to have your chart in front of you in your hands when you're watching each video. All right. If that's too much for you, well, then, you know, you could just start by just watching the videos and just listening. And then eventually over time, once you have your chart, you know, the best thing, yeah, to have your own chart, it will absolutely help you to, to have a better understanding of what's going on by gauging how you feel and the conversations you have, the things you're involved in, the choices that you're making. And literally just by following the moon. That's usually the simplest way for people to learn is by following the moon signs because they change every two and a half days. And so you'll notice your mood changes every two and a half days. And for some folks, that is stronger than it is for others. And so sometimes we say, whoa, they're moody. They change. What happened to them? This and that. They could have a super sensitive moon. And so people who have a sensitive moon are going to be very... Uh, open and susceptible to the changes of the moon sign, right? Every two and a half days, it changes signs. So who would be a sensitive moon sign? A Pisces moon would be very sensitive. A Cancer moon would be very sensitive, okay? Sensitivity, signs with high sensitivities, Cancer and Pisces. And even Scorpio, but Scorpio usually is a better way of keeping that hidden because they're all about what's below the surface and what's in the hidden. So they have those intense emotions that they keep them kind of on the buried side, meaning they only show you what they want to show you, right? Um, and if they do, you know, strike out or do something, or if you can tell, then it might be through fight or anger because it's just, it's it's Pisces. I'm sorry, it's Scorpio. That's, that's their first go-to is to lash out um, because it was born for war. It's ruled by Mars. Um, we're going to wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Below the video, I'll have all the degrees for those of you who like to pay attention to the degrees in your chart. Again, if you don't know and you want to know, just comment below.